I've been using the iPhone 15 Pro for a month now and it's been absolutely great and I've really enjoyed dropping down in size to a Pro instead of a Pro Max model this year. Now I want to go over a few different things from the sizing choice all the way through to overheating issues that we've had over the course of the last month talked about from charging ports all the way through to just software issues and then on top of that I want to talk about my experience of using it when going on holiday as recently I came back from Rome and we had a great trip but it was the case that I would say there was some issues when it came to my phone in terms of just battery consumption that's something that I do want to talk about it's just the batteries on this aren't particularly good so if you are expecting it to be decent battery I have a very big warning for you it won't it just isn't a good battery in comparison to other phones even a 14 pro probably has a better battery life than the 15 pro but there is reasons for that and we will discuss that today so the first thing i want to talk about is the overheating issue now in terms of general software issues when it comes to that causing heating issues i've not experienced any of that since they updated the phones and did whatever they did that helped fix these issues. The limitations of whatever it was that was causing heating issues is gone and it seems to be perfectly fine. I've not had any issues of overheating at all since the new updates came out so right now I can't complain around that. However the place that I will complain around is going to be if you use any other charger that's not a 20 watt charger it seems to completely make the phone a volcano i do not understand why um now overall i think i do understand why i think it's pretty obvious to most people which is you shouldn't use a higher wattage however other phones you can use a higher wattage you can even do this on ipads for example and they won't heat up to this degree this when i was charging up in comparison to literally anything else, I could charge an Android phone with the equivalent wattage and it would not get as hot as this was getting when I was using a Nintendo Switch charger. Now, yes, I do know Nintendo Switch chargers are 65 watts, or at least I believe they are. Um, you shouldn't be using them to charge your 20 watt iPhone. However, it shouldn't be heating up the phone to that degree. Considering there is already the limitation built into the phone for it, I don't understand why it literally makes it to the point of feeling as if you're going to burn your hand when using it. So don't use anything that's not a just general charging cable for it. Now in regards to that port, let's talk about USB-C next, which is something that in my unboxing video I talked about and then I kind of talked a little bit more positively around it within my two week later review. Now for myself, I have to say that it has grown on me a lot more than I initially thought. My original thoughts of this was going to be that it was pretty much useless. The data transfer speeds were slightly better, doesn't really matter considering most people aren't data transferring from their iPhone anyway. Um, and then the other one was around the charging speed and how obviously it hasn't changed. So it's pretty much a lightning port, just USB-C instead. However, where I've found the best usage of this has been in charging Apple Watches and other people's phones on the go. And more in particular, we did this on holiday. On one of the first few days, we were leaving the house and for some reason, whenever we go on holiday, we always end up forgetting certain charging ports. So we only had one to charge our phones. And um, yeah, we ended up going out and my phone had like 80% charge. My girlfriend's had like five or 10%. So we just plugged her phone into mine and it charged it up to a decent degree without absolutely destroying the battery consumption on my phone, which honestly surprised me. I was expecting considering hers was a 14 Pro Max for it to absolutely gobble up all of the battery. However, it didn't. It was pretty decent overall, so I can't complain in that manner. The other one was an Apple Watch. So for example, for myself, I was charging this thing a couple of times throughout the trip. And on the last day when we were waiting in an airport lounge, we were just waiting, charging up different bits, and I plugged in my AirPods to get charged that way. So again, something a bit more just interesting, even though there was a plug for it, it just allows you to have that utility there if you need it. And I think it will be interesting, especially once I make something like the you know, iPhone accessories video very soon. Uh, and I'm gonna talk about things like the cables that you can now use and different adapters that you can use to kind of make that experience feel more whole and as if it is meant to be a functional choice instead of just a change due to regulations, you know? So hopefully um, we can get even more things that are really cool with the USB-C change. So let's talk about the actual usage in terms of day-to-day -day life outside of the holiday, and then we'll talk about the holiday side of it next. In terms of day-to-day -day usage, I would say when I'm at home, I normally get almost all day battery. 
almost. I'd say I have to charge this thing. If I haven't charged it the night prior, I'm charging it by like 12 in the afternoon. Uh, and then if I have charged it during the night and I wake up with 100% charge, I'm probably going to have to put it back on charge at about 8 p.m. It's very similar to an Apple Watch, I'll be honest. I think both of them have very similar power consumption overall. And the reason for that is down to the processing power of this phone with the A17 Pro chip but also the display. So both of them mixed together have caused there to be a little bit of an issue when it comes to its battery consumption. However, since using my Apple Watch regularly, I have found that I'm actually getting borderline all day battery from this thing in comparison to my first day of usage of it where I wasn't using an Apple Watch and it literally drained it within about six hours. I don't understand how when I was just watching YouTube on it and I listened to some music. That was it. I didn't actually do that much stuff. I guess outside of that, downloading things, because obviously the change to the new phone from the old one, maybe that caused a little bit of it, but six hours is still absurd. But in terms of holidays, honestly, the thing that really surprised me is that this thing didn't die really quickly when using maps. So whenever we're on holiday, and I think many of you will probably have the same thing, which is that you're running maps almost all the time. Normally, I was loading it up on this and then loading it up on the watch. So it still ends up draining the actual phone as well, as well as the watch, but both actually handled it pretty well. When I was just using the phone, it would last maybe, let's say we were walking for like 45 minutes it would drain the battery by about 15%, which honestly isn't that bad. In most cases, it would drain it a lot quicker on many of the older phones, especially. On something like an iPhone 12, if you're running maps for about 45 minutes straight, it's draining probably about 30% of your battery. So yeah, it has at least improved in that manner, or at least they found a way of making it somehow more efficient, which is pretty decent all around. So I can't complain there. The other thing that you'll do a lot of the time when you are on holiday is gonna be probably taking photos. Again, absolutely great. Pretty much the same camera setup as last year with slight changes. Generally, changes that aren't overly noticeable, so I'm not going to talk about them. If you want to hear my general thoughts, watch my two week later video. In terms of it, I wouldn't say the cameras are a reason to upgrade. I don't think they're necessarily that big of a deal of a change. Anyone who tells you they are, they're probably lying to you. And the only actual quirk that I found with the cameras uh, was that at one point I took a photo of my girlfriend and... For some reason, it color corrected, and I don't understand what it was color correcting off of, and it just made the entire photo blue. I don't understand why, but it did it. So yeah, it's it's a very odd quirk. It only happened once, and it was something that was happening like like when I say like it happened once in terms of one photo, but I noticed it happening. I just left the phone as it was, and it was not changing. I saw it slowly go green, then to blue. And it just stayed neon blue. And I was like, what has happened here? The color correction was completely off. I have no clue why, but it happened only once. So I can't say it was something that's like a massive issue that made me deterred from taking photos. In regards to the build quality, again, I think the build quality of this is perfectly fine. I know some people have issues when it comes to the snapping. Simple advice. Don't try and snap your phone that simple. Don't try and snap your phone. Most people aren't going to be trying to anyway. In terms of it, the titanium feels great. I no longer feel it anymore because I'm using a leather case and this one is absolutely amazing. I'll link it down below. I have no affiliation with them and sadly, if I could, I'll put an Amazon affiliate link in the uh, description, but sadly, I can't. It's not on there yet. Once it is, it's definitely going on there. But overall, I have to say that the build of this phone feels really good, all the way through to the edges, no longer feeling absolutely sharp, which did feel good in terms of the older models. You know, it made the phone feel more premium, more new. And the last place that I wanted to finish up this video is going to be about the action button. And in my opinion, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yes, I think some people will use it. However, again, I think most won't. It's one of those things that is too high up on the phone. Most people just won't care about its utility. And generally speaking, the only things I've changed it to, and I've recently changed it to voice memos again, is just that I have the ability to quickly do a voice memo. And I only did that today because I came up with something that I was like, oh, I want to do a voice memo. It'd be useful to be able to do that now. But I don't normally do voice memos. It's very rare that I do. And uh, outside of that, I was using it to open Safari. It's really the only thing that I'd want quick access to. Um, but yeah, overall, I wouldn't say that it's particularly worth it or that valuable to most people. With that all being said, I would say that this phone is definitely worth it if you are an iPhone 12 user. Maybe a 13 user, but if you're a 13 Pro, 
or a 14 or 14 Pro, I wouldn't recommend upgrading this year. Yes, I don't think that most people are like me who are upgrading every year. I'm only doing it because I can and also because I can make videos about it, which helps me. Um, so that, that's the only reason why I'm doing it yearly. If I wasn't, I would have just stuck with my 14 Pro. And even then, if I wasn't doing videos about them, I would have just stuck to my 13 Pro Max because both of them were absolutely great. So I would definitely say that it's not worth upgrading unless you're on like a 12 Pro and if you're on like a 13. Outside of that, a 14, 14 Pro and a, you know, a 13 Pro, it's just not worth the upgrade this year just yet. And the only final bit that I will actually mention, just because I remembered it just now, is I said that I was going to just briefly talk about the sizings side of things, because I decided to downsize, so if this isn't something you care about, don't worry, you can always click off now. Um, in regards to it, yeah, I downsized to a Pro instead of a Pro Max for the first time in literally i'd say ever since the last phone that i'd say was anywhere near this size that i owned was a huawei mate 20 pro which was still pretty decently sized it was a decent sized phone especially with the edge to edge display looked absolutely phenomenal still to this day i think that's one of the nicest looking displays on any phone i've ever owned however dropping down to this size has actually been really nice it means i use my ipad mini a lot more i use an apple watch a lot more but on top of that the actual feel of this has really grown on me. I no longer feel as if I'm holding a massive tablet in my hand anymore, which was something that I always never noticed up until you downsize and then you really start to notice. So yes, with that all being said, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, do subscribe for more content every single week. I upload twice a week. I also upload shorts, but if you watch these videos, don't worry about the shorts. They're basically the same thing. Uh, and outside of that, if you are interested in buying a nice sleek wallet, make sure to go check out minimaldesigns.com. It will be down in the description below it's designs with a y instead of an i uh, with that you can end up just supporting the channel but also supporting a business that we're looking to build uh, in regards to things like tech accessories everyday carry stuff and some other things later on down the line that i'm not going to discuss just yet so with that being said if you did enjoy this video make sure you leave a like do subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one have a good one